<gasps> Top 10 strongest cards of all time. Okay, I know this one's cringe. She's not hit, but are also very good. And usually, even if a player doesn't run trap cards in their... This list will go over cards that were crazy strong on their own, to the point where usually the entire deck was based around it and it alone. This list will also include cards which were super strong in their own meta, so maybe aren't as strong today as they were in their prime. And at number 10, we have Solemn Judgment. Solemn Ooh, Judgment is a counter trap good. card with the effect to pay half your life points to stop a monster from being summoned. Uh, yeah, or this card is definitely deserving to be on this list. What is it? Top 10 strongest cards of all time? Solemn Judgment? Probably one of the strongest cards of all time. The effect of a spell or trap card. So basically, it's pay half your life points to negate one of anything, which was a really strong effect. When did you start but using the enough, format? This card what format? What are you talking about? Since the second video. I barely saw play when it first came out. You see, the whole pay half your life points thing made a lot of people assume that this card was bad. Because all it did was trade one for... Whose idea was to put the BGM in the video? It was the editor. I probably just forgot to tell him to change it. Which is pretty bad because this video looks like it did well. One at the cost of half your life points. Which didn't seem like a good trade-off. Until people started to realize that paying half your life points to stop one of your opponent's key combo plays, which worked against 99% of decks, was actually pretty good. And then everybody started playing this card, and then it got banned. God damn and the, the music's banned for the longest time. Until recently, with how infrequent trap cards are even being played in decks anymore, it came off the ban list, and is now currently limited to one per deck. Solemn Judgment is an interesting card, that had a couple of other cards printed based on it, but are also very good. And usually, even if a player doesn't run trap cards in their deck because they're too slow, they'll still consider running Solemn cards because of how good they are. And at number 9, we have the Tyrant Neptune. This is another- That is still kind of true. Like, look at Dinomorphia. Part of the reason they're able to compete is because of the Solemn cards. The music really ruins the video? Yeah, the music sucks here. The one kind of like Solemn Judgment, where this card existed in the game for a really long time, and no one used it. But unlike with Solemn Judgment, it was just because there wasn't really a good card to make use of its effect. See, with Solemn Judgment, people didn't understand how good the card was. Neptune was pretty decent, and then became broken when Luralisk Independent Nightingale was released. Yeah. You see, the Tyrant Neptune has the effect where it gains attack and defense equal to the monster. I don't want to hear this again. This card was one of the retrained yeah, dark, dark versions Dragon. of the cards that existed in the game, where they would just have similar effects to their normal counterparts, and just require Dark-type monsters for their effects. Dark Arm Dragon was the dark version of Arm Dragon Level 7, who was a level card that could only be special summoned by the effect of Arm Dragon Level 5. And its effect was to send one monster from your hand to the graveyard to destroy all monsters your opponent controls with an attack less than the monster you discarded for the effect. So, it was a pretty decent effect, if a little hard to summon. So what Dark Arm Dragon did was require you to have exactly three dark monsters in your graveyard, which was a unique effect at the time. And then, as many times per turn as you wanted, you could banish I one love dark monster dark from arm graveyard dragon. to destroy one card on the field. So if you could bring this card out, you could immediately destroy three of any cards on the field. And this was also back when ignition effects were still in the game, which allowed you to use spell speed one monster effects as spell speed two during your turn. Yeah, so like back in the day when you brought out Dark Arm Dragon, you could immediately pop one card before it could get destroyed by anything. It's like if you're putting it like chained to bottomless trap hole or some kind of destruction effect to it, you'd be able to destroy something. Nowadays it doesn't work that way, but like you would always get at least one pop with the card before it went away if your opponent tried to get rid of it. So if your opponent tried to stop this card when it was summoned, they could still destroy one card in the field before going away. Also, if you had multiple oh, dark arm dragons in your hand, video. you could bring them all out at the same time. As the conditions for bringing them out don't require- I didn't trust my past self to explain the card correctly. <laughs> for you to actually remove any of the resources from your graveyard. It's for you to have exactly three dark monsters. And dark arm dragon was so good, it was the main factor in one of the few tier zero decks in the game. But if you don't know what tier zero is, tiers in Yu-Gi-Oh are determined by the popularity of decks in high levels of play. If a deck has more than 50% representation at events, it is considered tier zero. 65. And Dark Arm Dragon decks absolutely had more than 50% representation at events when it was first introduced. Eventually, they just limited the card to one, and that significantly reduced the power of Teladad decks, to the point where it was no longer completely overpowered. Turns out Dark Arm Dragon isn't half bad when it's just one per deck. The OCG even experimented with temporarily moving Dark Arm Dragon to semi-limited, and Dark Arm Dragon decks immediately started doing incredibly well. So the very next ban list was put back down to one. So three copies of Dark Arm Dragon would still most likely see competitive play, even in the modern format. And at number seven, we have Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus. What? This card is quite the mouthful this to card? say, and is a good example of just a big boss monster that's hard to beat. It's a rank 12 Why is this monster, card on the list? and if you're able to summon it with six or more materials, the card will have these effects. It gains a one-sided mistake effect. Your opponent can't add cards to their hand. It is unaffected by other card effects, Magnus. except for cards in its archetype. On a quick effect, they can shuffle one card in the field into the deck, and if it's destroyed, it floats into three Super Quantal Mech Beast X Seeds monsters from your graveyard. All on a 36 Yeah, this card is a meme. Stick, Why is it on this list? just to beat over Ultimate Falcon. This card was so strong and hard to take out that it popularized the use of Kaijus in the main deck. I mean, attributing the card for Kaijus was basically like the only way to get rid of the card. Half a format, maybe. It was a one-card I win 
boss monster, which made it an incredibly strong card. But since you have to put so many resources into it, and it doesn't really affect the field that much, you can only get rid of one card per turn, it's not the most destructive thing in the world, when compared to some of the other, more stronger cards on this list. And at number 6, we have Towers. This card yeah. is a lot like Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus, in that it's unaffected by pretty much everything, it can beat over pretty much anything, and it can <laughs> get rid of the card turboed and can't do shit. Except the big difference between the two is that Towers is much easier to bring out, and was on the ban list for that reason. Towers uh -huh. has the effect where you need to tribute three Klee monsters for its normal summon, and then the card is unaffected by spell and traps. Towers and active... was so influential that we literally call boss monsters who are hard to beat Towers nowadays. Like, you know a card was, like, game-changing when you name a whole, like, type of card after it. Like, same with Stratos. We call searchers and archetypes, you know, Stratoses. Or Rotas for cards that search. Garnets, yeah. Towers was a, a name changer. Like, we, we name cards after it. This Speaking one deserves to be on the list. I don't know about Super Quantal Great Magnus. That, that one is suspicious. This one for sure. Who have an original level or rank lower than this card. So at the time, it was immune to basically all monster effects. Still waiting for a spell cast to wrote out. They ain't gonna do that. No problem. I think that's kind of why it was taken off the ban list. Because Link monsters can actually get rid of it. Also, yeah. all special summon monsters lose 500 attack and defense. And once per turn, you can make your opponent send one monster Before from their Link's hand much or their side of the towers. field to the yep. graveyard. It's this last effect that was the cherry on top for making towers so good. If you got out towers on your first turn, you not only had an incredibly difficult boss monster to get over, you also got to get rid of one card in your opponent's hand, which made your opponent start with one less card and is always Oh, I forgot it hand ripped your and opponent also, too. Since this effect Holy forces shit. your opponent to send a card to the graveyard, it bypasses almost all forms of monster protection. So, if your opponent only has one monster on the field and none you in their hand, with and that monster, quants? for example, is an ultimate falcon no. and you can do everything, it's not immune to your opponent having to send it to the graveyard. You see the thing is, effect. Super Quanto Great Mag King Magnus a Turbo is what initially got brilliant fusion like on the map like before the deck that topped with the great king magnus nobody was using the brilliant fusion engine and then they thought oh my god someone used the brilliant fusion engine to get this meme of a card to top an event what if we used it in actual good decks like it was influential but not because the card itself was like that good it also did popularize people to actually like play kaijus. That's why nobody else played the deck anymore, because it was stopped too easily in the side deck by a kaiju. But also, it popularized the Brilliant Fusion Engine, which was probably its biggest legacy. This is what made Tower so strong. Great protection on top of a great effect, and was easily searched out in its archetype. And its archetype could easily get out three tributes for its summon, with some of those tributes even having effects for being tributed. And at number 5, we have number 86, Heroic Champion. This card is a lot like Great Magnus, in that it gains amazing effects. No one uses Brilliant Fusion in Master Duel? That's because uh, Pred Upon Orpheus Scorpio is limited as well. Like, if it was at 3, you'd probably see a lot more Brilliant Fusions. Based on the number of Exceeds materials it has. With all of its effects activated, it has the effects too. Oh, they have, turn, there is Rongo Midia on this list. I was about to say, it's like, where's Rongo at? Summon monsters, unaffected by all other card effects. Yeah, Rongo Midia deserves to be on this list. I fucking hate this card. So, you get a strong monster who is unaffected by everything, can't be destroyed by anything, can destroy all of your opponent's cards, and locks your opponent out of summoning, including a kaiju to get rid of this card. Yeah. This card was the complete package. Indestructible, strong, destroyed cards, the Rongo and had a Bongo. effect. And this card was in the game for a long time, with no one really using it because it was kind of difficult to get the required amount of materials for it, especially since it does have a maintenance cost. You need to detach one Exceeds material from this card during your opponent's end phase. This card didn't really start seeing a lot of play until Gossip Shadow was released. Yeah. Gossip Shadow had the effect to transfer itself and all of its Exceeds materials to another number monster, which allowed you to instantly grant three Exceeds materials to basically any number monster, which included number 86 Heroic Champion, as he too is a number monster. So, Dark Warrior <laughs> decks could easily bring out Heroic Champion and Gossip Shadow was to get it to its maximum amount of effects for the main Gossip Shadow. And to allow it to keep kind those of. effects for a few turns, which was more than enough to lock down an opponent long enough to win the duel. And because Turboing Out number 86 became a legitimate deck, this card got banned, and is still banned to this day, and will probably be banned as long as Gossip Shadow exists. Yeah. Number 4, Masterpiece, the true Draco Slaying King. This card could substitute continuous spell or trap cards you control for monsters for its tribute summon. And I still think Masterpiece is too good. I know there's like some contention about whether Masterpiece can come off the ban list or not. But I still think this card is busted and I don't want to see it ever again. He gained immunity to the effects by the types of cards used for its tribute summon. So for example, if you tributed a monster and a spell card, Masterpiece would be immune to monster and spell card effects. If you tributed a spell and trap card, it would be immune to spell and trap effects. So you basically got to choose which two types of effects this card became immune to. On top of that, it had a quick effect <laughs> to destroy one card on the field for the cost of banishing any continuous spell or trap from your graveyard. 
So, its effects are pretty simple. Immune to two-thirds of the cards in the game, a decent body at 1950, and spell speed to destruction, to disrupt plays during your opponent's turn, or to get rid of- You guys have to remember the context in which this card is played. It's played with floodgates. <laughs> like, this card is played with- Th That's it, basically. It's, it's played alongside floodgates, and it can do it very well. That's why it's so ridiculously strong. If you if you remove it from the context of floodgates, like you think, wow, that's that's pretty strong. But when you remember that this card is played alongside floodgates, and you think, oh, okay, yeah, this card's busted. Your problem cards during your turn. Now, what made this card really broken was the archetype it belongs to could easily search it out, easily fill the grave with continuous spell and trap cards. And on top of that, the spell and traps in a true Draco deck have effects that activate when they're sent to the graveyard, including by being attributed for Masterpiece. Now, most cards, which can disrupt plays during your opponent's turn, have some kind of limitation to them that makes them incredibly hard to pull off. And if they don't have those limitations, they're usually hard to summon. Masterpiece was easy to search. You would be played in Eldritch. Yeah, you could play this card in Eldritch. I forgot about the card that. Or, I didn't think of and that. And led to the card say. being banned. Similar to Zodiac Dryden, easy to summon with spell speed to destruction effects. But <laughs> Dryden Dryden, got banned Masterpiece again. was much harder to get rid of. <laughs> Number three, Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. Oh, they, this they card was so strong when card. it first came out that it was basically the reason a ban list was created. Yep. This card has the effect where you can pay 1,000 life points to Can send we it. talk about how crazy this card was when it first came out? This card came out in like, what, 2003? When people were still doing fucking Summon Skull Beatdown? And the effect would be good today. Like, pre-Arata Emperor Dragon would probably still see play to this fucking day. And it came out when Summon Skull Beatdown was... <laughs> this card is the definition of, like, power creep. Like, they power crept the game so fucking hard with Chaos Emperor Dragon that they just, like... They're like, well, we know the ceiling now. We can't go as high as Chaos Emperor Dragon... Yeah, it has super cool art. It has, like, the coolest name, too. Its stats are premium. Summon Skull Beatdown. Yeah, this came out when Summon Skull Beatdown was still viable. And the effect is so ridiculously powerful that it would be considered powerful even today if it was, like, you know, pre rotted All cards on the field and in both players' hands to the graveyard. And then inflict 300 points of damage to your opponent for every card sent to the graveyard with this effect. The card also had a very easy summoning requirement, just banishing one light and dark monster from your graveyard, and had an incredibly strong stat line. It's basically the same as the Blue Eyes White Dragon, the hallmark of what a good stat line yeah, should be. Yeah, like, With what Chaos the Emperor fuck? Dragon Why did they also give it Blue Eyes stats? You can get rid of all cards in both players' hands and on the field, and then search out Yadagarasu to attack and lock your opponent out of drawing a card, to completely lock down your opponent from playing the game. And because of this combo, the first ban list was added to the game, immediately banning Yadagarasu and Chaos Emperor Dragon. Yeah. And today, this combo is no longer possible because they've changed Chaos Emperor Dragon's effect, and Sandgan. With Sandgan, you can no longer activate the effect of a card, add it to your hand, the turn it's added to your hand with its effect. And with Chaos Emperor Dragon, its effect and summoning requirements are still the same, but you can't activate any other card effects during the turn you activate Chaos Emperor Dragon's effect. Which means Chaos Emperor Dragon's effect needs to be the first thing you do on your turn. You can no longer set up the graveyard or attack with Yadagarasu to activate its effect. And this new nerfed version of Chaos Emperor Dragon is currently limited and doesn't really see any play, as the yeah. new added restrictions to it does kind of remove any cheese that the card once had. So this card is on this list for the old school pre It's effect, really hard to pull off the effect as the benchmark. I kind of want to make a deck with be. this. And at number two, we have... I, I should write that down. Chaos Emperor Dragon deck. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, I don't know. I, I didn't need to stop the video for this. Have last turn. Last turn is an instant win effect. Would Yana be viable? <laughs> Do you guys... I remember I, I was looking into this card for the, the video I did with MBT. Have you guys seen the 19 page document going over its rulings? This card is a rulings nightmare. In comparison to all the other, much I'm more sure this card is just banned because of the, the ruling nightmare effects, it is. Like drawing all five pieces of Exodia. With last turn, you can only activate this card if your life points are a thousand or less. You select one monster in your side of the field, then send all of the cards in the field into both players' hands to the graveyard. Then your opponent gets to special summon any one monster from their deck. And then those monsters do battle, and whichever player has a monster on the field at the end of the turn wins the duel. Of course, any other outcome results in a draw. Now, the way to cheese this effect is to... You just bring out... You see, the reason this card is a ruling's nightmare is because it has, like, a battle phase that exists outside the battle phase. And also, it, like... It skips a turn... So basically, when you activate the card, it immediately goes into a special, like, created battle phase. Where your opponent gets to summon a monster from their deck. 
and it the the effect of the card basically um insinuates that both the monsters are just going to battle and that no other effects are going to happen like but what happens if you summon a monster that has an effect that activates on its summon like what if you activate stratos do you summon out stratos and then search a card the answer to that is no you don't because like this all resolves at the same time and like what if you have dark world destroyer which destroys a, a card on when it on its summon does that happen the answer is i think it does because it because of the rulings and like yeah what if you have limiter removal what if you have other cards you can use you can't use them like what if you have quick effects what if you have negates that could happen during like the, this phase because remember all this happens at the same time and it also ends the turn like what happens about end of turn effects are those skipped like standby phase effects are, are those skipped as well do you, like what do you do with those phases and also what about monsters that can attack multiple times can they attack multiple times in this battle phase the answer is yes they can why uh because the ruling says so <laughs> Simply have a monster on the field, which prevents someone, your opponent from recycling. Someone spot recyclers, like, like Oline, a token and which causes a draw. Which with this combo back in the yeah, day. Yeah, it, it causes <laughs> players who use the last turn deck would stall like if you don't just use it with Jaojin, you know that that's simple. You you bring out Jaojin, you activate last turn, you win because your opponent can't summon a card. There's no like ifs, ands, or buts about that. But like, what if you don't? Under all those other circumstances, there's so many like ruling nightmares with this card. Because, like, all the effect happens at the same time. <laughs> and it, like, skips Jojin's phases turn, and creates its own way. battle phase. And had Jojin the Spiritualist in their hand, then they would use life point manipulation cards, like Inspection, to get their life points below 1,000. Have Jojin the Spiritualist out in the field, and then activate last turn to instantly win. And your opponent wouldn't be able to special summon a monster from their deck. So Jojin would stay out on the field at the Fun end of the Fun fact turn. about Inspection, this card had an errata to change the effect to be once per turn, but without actually eroding the card like there's just an internal no 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 that's not errata this card had a ruling update to make it once per turn even though inspection the effect of the card is during your opponent's standby phase you can pay 500 life points to look at one random card in your opponent's hand the effect is not once per turn which means during your opponent's standby phase you can just pay as many life points as you wanted you know to get your opponent your life points below a thousand to activate last turn However, they created a rulings change to give this card a once per turn instead of an errata. So it's one of the first cards in the game, and like one of the only cards in the game, that received a once per turn errata without getting an errata. They literally just created its own special ruling that you just have to know. Because they never reprinted the card, so there's no like thing that says this is only once per turn. You just have to know that it has a special ruling that says it's once per turn. Just like Hollow Life Barrier and Wabaku without changes of text? Yeah, exactly. Have been added to the game, which prevents special summons. And there's even an easier way to search out Like, last funny turn, thing, I didn't know Hollow Life Barrier prevented monsters from getting destroyed until Duel Links. <laughs> I just thought it only worked on effect damage. So if last turn was ever unbanned, it would be much easier to use today than it was back then. The reason I have last turn at number two is because the card is so strong that it instantly allows you to win the duel and is not that difficult to pull off. In fact, it's easier to pull off than some of the summoning requirements for a few of the other cards on this list. I think that makes this card in of itself very powerful, but I'm not really sure if it's weaker than the number one spot on this list, but let's get into that. <gasps> I know one, this is... We have Spellbook of Judgment. Yeah. This card has the effect where, during the end phase of the turn this, this card is activated, well. you can add spell, <laughs> spell cards from your deck to your hand, up to the number of spell cards activated during the turn after you use Spellbook of Judgment. <laughs> then you can special summon one spellcaster type monster Judgment to from your one. Deck, with uh, a level less than the number of spellbook cards People are going to gonna clown on this video. So, for example, if you use Spellbook of Judgment and then activate They're five spellbook cards during that turn, at the end of the turn, you'd be able to add five spellbook cards from your deck to your hand and then special Legal summon a spellcaster days. type monster that was level Shut five up. or lower. Don't and spellbook decks had spellcaster type monsters, I tried which my best. effects during the end phase as well to gain even more advantage. I'm just this. the dude. Spellbook of Judgment basically allowed you to go plus five during your end phase, or even higher. Maybe you should update this video. I should. I should update this video. the same hand advantage as activating a Pot of Greed, with the potential of drawing more cards than even the most broken draw cards in the game. Not only that, Spellbooks could easily search this card out and recycle the card, if for some reason they didn't win very quickly. And as a testament to how good Spellbook cards were, that even after Spellbook of Judgment got banned, Spellbooks were still a meta deck. That's so the true. Spellbook of Judgment searched out and recycled. People still played cards, Spellbooks after the Judgment got banned. This card was just insanely broken, and it's just a great example of one of the most powerful cards in the game, from just the pure advantage it could generate. And the funny thing is with Spellbook of Judgment, when this card first came out, Spellbooks were not a tier zero deck. 
because Spellbook of Judgment came out in the same set that had Dragon Rulers, another one of the most powerful oh, archetypes yeah. in the game, which really just goes to Kinda show like how strong Dragon Rulers and, uh, that when sprites. Spellbook of Judgment was legal, it wasn't enough to turn them into a tier zero deck. Didn't Super Although, Rejuvenate get banned? Although, the Dragon Rulers are more of a yep. really good engine, and they weren't really good by themselves, and that's why none of them really made this list. So Will this you play this card? Of course I'll play cards, this card. Which Spellbook of Judgment represents perfectly. Now, as to whether Judgment is better than some of the other cards on this list, I think so, maybe by a little bit, because this uh, card was very easy to search out and generated an insane amount of advantage in a deck that could make use of that advantage. Okay, And also fits fair. perfectly within the theme of this top 10. All right, and that's the end of the video. If you think there are other really powerful cards that should have made this list, I'd love to hear about them, as well as ideas for future videos just like this one down in the comments. No matter how many times you're a broken card, nothing makes me more mad than Mirror Force. Airbender's strongest card is Kaiba's credit card. Oh, I think this is one of the first videos that felt like ever edited. So... How do I get to my channel? Rumor Red X. So, the most popular video on my World of Warcraft channel... 0 0.23... Is... Top 10 Hardest Raid Bosses of All Time Reforged. It came out in 2019... It has uh, two two million two point seven million views, and it's a remake. It's a remake of this video, which came out eight years ago. In vanilla, wow, rating was still. Did this one come out? 2013? 2014? Yeah, twenty fourteen. So like a precedent is set, that I'm fine remaking top tens. And they can even do very well. I think the remake is probably one of the best videos I've ever made. This video is great. I love it. I spent a month working on it. It's an excellent video. If you're a World of Warcraft fan, I highly recommend it. Not just because it's my video, but because it's just a good video. Bestie. Hey, it's Nova Ayokami. What's up? We're just here cringing at my old videos. Yeah, 2.7. I don't think I have any... Holy shit, 2.4 mil? When did that happen? <laughs> when did this go above 2 million? Okay, so I might have a Yu-Gi-Oh! video that, that might top it one of these days. But, like, the other one is 50 minutes long. It's a long... It's it's a very long video. Does you make all the videos and delete the old ones? No one will know. I don't have to delete them. I can just remake them. It's basically an updated video. Like, I can easily update, you know, the video on the strongest cards of all time. Because, I mean, it has Spellbook of Judgment at number one. And it has Dark Arm Dragon in there. Nobody even uses Dark Arm Dragon anymore. And it's at three copies. Nova missed the Rescue Rabbit Sage. Oh, uh, the Saga? <gasps> the Rescue Rabbit videos. Those are garbage. It's a good thing you missed them because they're bad videos. I just remember I was watching the first one, the first episode of Rescue Rabbit, and I was cringing. And then he, he set five and passed, and I laughed my ass off. And I was like, okay, that's a good joke. The su oh, fuck, I forgot Super Quant is on there, too. Yeah, so it has a couple of, um... The fact uh, is to simply... It has some weird cards in there. You guys can't see, because it's, like, off to the side a little bit. But it has, uh... Let's see. I'd probably remove Last Turn. I'd probably remove Great King Magnus, Dark Arm Dragon, Solemn Judgment, Tyrant Neptune. I'd probably remove half the list, to be honest. We love Rescue Rabbit and... Maxi's not even on the list. Yeah, I'd probably put Maxi on the list too. At this time, Maxi was banned, so like it wasn't on my radar. The duologues cut. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, I think that's enough watching videos for the day.